What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Chris here from TM32 and Fedora Gaming. Welcome to another episode of our Fire Emblem Fates Conquest playthrough. Uh, in our previous episode, we successfully managed to uh, circumvent the rebellion of the Ice Tribe, doing so peacefully with no violence whatsoever, no lives lost either on their side or ours, which is uh, a pleasant surprise. Another one pleasant surprise after another, going through the first two chapters of Conquest, getting no deaths, First try, no resets. It's, it's looking pretty good so far. Uh, I'm going to eat those words in the future, I'm sure. But um, so far, so good. So we're going to get ready for the next chapter, chapter 9. Actually, you know what? I think we're going to go into the prologue. Or um, paralogue, whatever it's called. But first, uh, we're going to get some, through some support conversations, as is tradition. Hopefully, we'll try to get these done maybe after our missions. So we can just jump straight into it. But we have a fair amount of support conversations to go through. Uh, Silas, Elise, and myself all have conversations with each other. Arthur and Effie have a B-rank conversation. And then Odin and Niles. So let's just uh, get started here with myself and Silas. Do you have a moment, sir? No. Go away. What's going on? Okay. Yeah, about that whole childhood friends thing, I seem to recall um, the whole you putting yourself in harm's way. Right? Almost getting hung for... Hanged? Not hung. Hanged. Hanged. Getting hanged for taking me on a picnic. How, well, yeah, why, why didn't I remember that? Did I get dropped on my head? As a child? Or did I have... Did he... Did King Daddy erase my memory? That could be it. That could be it. Some... Mystical Dark Mage powers. Gave me amnesia, because every main character in Fire Emblem has to have amnesia, right? There always has to be a character with amnesia. Yeah, I am the best friend. I am the best friend anyone could have. Completely forgetting someone who would who would uh, risk their life for me and joined the joined the uh, the Norian Knights just to be able to like say, "Hey, what's up? How's it going, man?" He's just like, nah, don't don't even don't even worry your pretty little blue head. It's no big deal at all. Silas just wants to be like total bromance situation up in here. And I guess I'm okay with that for the moment. I mean if he's willing to to you know take an arrow for me. Cool beans, man. I'm 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 one hundred percent okay with that. Here we are. Yeah, sure. Let's 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 chat about something other than, you know, how I completely forgot that you existed for a while. Yes, eternally grateful that we can be we can be bros again. Wait, I was cheerful as a child? I was cheerful back when you knew me. That that you, then clearly that's not, that's not right. That can't be right. That can't be right. Hey, perfect chance for a picnic now that King Daddy is not around to you know have you hanged or executed otherwise. Maybe I think I think Daddy would probably prefer the guillotine. Actually, he'd he'd prefer the guillotine. Hanging is is isn't brutal enough. You have to you have to see blood and and <clears throat> all that other sort of uh, uncomfortable nonsense. Somewhere I always wanted to see. Where's that? He he knows this, and I don't. He 
He knows exactly, like, that's the kind of friend that he is. It's like un uncomfortable levels of friendship right now. It's like he remember, remembers everything that I ever said to him as a child. He's held on to that for so long. People like this don't exist in real life, do they? Do they exist? Am I, do I just have horrible luck with meeting human beings in the real world? I've never, I don't think I've ever seen anyone this uh, brotastic before in the real world. Like, remember all those things that you wanted to do when you were a kid? Let's go do them right now. I will totally support you on this. Let's go. Whatever you want to do. Yeah, probably not the best time to do it right now, since we're having to deal with, you know, war and other sort of dip, uh, difficult circumstances, but... Maybe we'll, we'll take it slow, you know? Silas and I can take it slow. Just, you know, go for go for a walk around the, the interdimensional space castle first. And then we'll start, you know, going from there. Oh god, does he? Does he have something up his sleeve? We're gonna do everything! Everything you ever wanted to do! Everything! You have no choice in the matter. We're going to do everything, and we're going to do it together because we're best bros, damn it! Silas just needs a hug, I think. He needs a bro hug. He seems like the kind of guy that's just like he, he's he's been he's had no friends like my like i was the only interaction that he ever had with another with another person as a child it wasn't his family and he's just like latching on to that like i have to be the best person to this to to lord chris i have to do everything he's my only friend please love me Yeah, that, that's not creepy at all that you remember everything that I said as a child. All the places that I that I said I wanted to go to when I was like six years old. Right after my, my real father was brutally murdered. And I was taken prisoner. Thanks though. Appreciate it. Wait, are we leaving right now? Okay. Sure. I still have to talk to a bunch of other people though, so why don't we wait on that? Take a rain check, like forever. Yeah, let's let's I'll I'll totally go do that right now. Not really. Oh, poor boy. Yeah, I'm uh, <clears throat> I'm I'm sensing I'm sensing there's there's more backstory to this. I'm I'm assuming that there's going to be something amnesia related in that situation right there. It seems like every everyone in this game has to have a dark backstory. <clears throat> like Felicia seems to have one. Flora definitely has one, as we determined from our previous chapter. Um, maybe the we'll see. We'll get through Elise's support conversation. Maybe she like kicks puppies for a living or something. Like, that's exactly what she's doing right now. She's she's practicing her puppy kicking techniques. Yeah. Puppy punching. Excuse me. Not kicking. Good for her, though, that she's actually trying to learn how to fight instead of being a silly troubadour and, like, heals only, lol. What's going on, little sister who's not actually my little sister? Not doing anything, even though I just saw you. You are totally doing things. Things involving punching puppies. You're you're trying to practice your puppy punching, puppy punching and kitten kicking. A pretty girl picking flowers by punching the air in front of them, right? Watch too many episodes, uh, too many episodes of Dragon Ball Z. That's probably what happens. Got this this that Goku attitude. 
in her mind. It's like, if I punch really, really hard, the wind will pluck all these flowers from the ground, right? Totally. <laughs> I am a sweet little girl, and you will think of me as such. Or I will have my retainers do nasty, totally not sweet things to you. Totally not trying to, you know, be hardcore action hero Elise or anything like that. It's like, nope. Totally not. I'm just too clever, that's it. That's it. Totally the cleverest person that ever clevered. Now, okay. <clears throat> Troubadours are, are complicated characters because they are heels only, but that doesn't mean they're any less awesome. Like, Elise is... is I think Elise was the real MVP of our last chapter, to be quite honest. That Lily's Poise. Granted, Lily's Poise is her personal ability, so she can be any other class in the game and still have that, but still, it's still... It's still good. We'll convert her to a, to a fighter class at some point. We'll get her through the Troubadour stuff. We'll get her some action. We'll make her, like, the most offensively oriented character we have on our party. We'll see if we can do that. I promise you now, Elise. That will happen. No one will ever think of you as a burden if you can step to them and murder them straight up. It's like when you're when you're one-shotting enemy forces left and right, can we get her um gale force? Ooh, that would be that would be wonderful. Always looking out for my little sister by strongly encouraging her murderous tendencies and instilling those tendencies in her if they do not yet exist. The ability to not die probably means a lot more in this game than it does in the real world. It's like, yeah, defending yourself in the real world, eh, it's important, but we're not, most of us aren't really like in harm's way every day. <laughs> So yeah, it does seem kind of weird that you would have someone on the battlefield actively, like, going into harm's way that is not able to defend themselves. It means everything. It means literally everything. Oh my god. Is there a, is there a fist fighting class in Fire Emblem Fates? I think, is there one on the, the Hoshiden side, like a monk or something like that? I don't think fists go kaboom, Elise. I, I, I like the idea of fists going kaboom, but I don't think that's how they actually work. I'm impressed by your exuberance. That's a lovely word. Exuberance. High five to the, the translation localization crew for that, for just using that word. Yeah. <clears throat> Punch me in the face. I can take it. I'm a dragon. I can take it. You want, me to, you want a fist fight as a dragon? Can I teach her how to be a dragon? I should teach her how to be a dragon. I'm not sure how, how that. I'm not sure that's how training works, though. But sure, if Elise needs a sparring partner, let's do it. We'll beat the crap out of each other because we're siblings. It's like, although I, I love you more than my real brothers and sisters. Totally not creepy at all. Oh good, cardio. Everyone loves cardio. There's not a single person alive that hates running. Or anything that involves, you know, moving one's limbs in a... ...fashion such as that. 
Yay, running! <clears throat> We're gonna make her sick of this real quick. I'm learning to like Elise, actually. She's she's kind of fun. We haven't gotten any of our other Norian siblings yet, so she's the one that I've been having to, to deal with the most, but she's pretty cool. She seems pretty cool. For, fulfilled the request. Did you bring her candy? Aw, that's cool. Starving family mentioned delivers a month's worth of food. See, Elise is actually really cool. The Norian siblings... They seem... I mean... They, pro they probably would kick puppies if you're on the Hoshiden side. Or at least that's, that's what the, the Hoshidens would tell you. But here, it's like everyone's a good guy except for King Daddio. And the people who work for King Daddio. Thanks a million. I will actually give you a million gold for giving people, giving homeless people food for a month. A homeless family. Or did they have a home? I don't know. Maybe they were starving. They, they didn't say they were homeless. But I'm rich, so I can give you anything I want. Everyone here is so goody two-shoes. When do I find the, like, the, the morally gray characters? in this situation that are still on my side because they're not King Daddio. King Daddio is not morally gray, he's morally, um, <clears throat> charcoal. Pitch black. How can I ever thank you? Well? You could pay me. For once. She's being very suggestive with this. It's like, aren't you? Are you sure? Are you sure? I'm sure I could think of something that I could give you as a reward. Hee <laughs> hee. Don't be shy, Mr. Silas. <laughs> yeah, this isn't awkward at all. I really want to see uh, Elise and Niles' conversations. I'm sure that would be <clears throat> a party and a half. I do have something in mind, princess. Cue the, uh, the Barry White music. What? Oh my god. Seriously, Silas has no friends. He has... he... he is... Oh, poor Silas. Poor Silas. This is making me sad now. The poor guy is just like, this is the only family he has ever had. That's why he's so obsessive about being around me and why he remembered everything about what I said to him as a child. And he's just like, he has, he's, he's, he's a loner. He has nobody. That's what I'm, that's what I'm thinking. Must have been orphaned as a child or something. He needs to be. We need to. We need to an, uh, anoint him as an honorary Norian prince. That's what needs to happen by the end of this game. We need to remove King Daddyo from power and add all of our our the members of our army in as norian princes and princesses we can just be one big happy family of death and murder and loveliness ideally just being as my being my sister forever would be nice but we'll settle for a day because that would be awkward otherwise <laughs> doesn't it sound like fun Totally not, not really. But okay! This is seriously not awkward in the slightest. I don't even know what to say anymore. Like things just get weirder and weirder <clears throat> the more I play this game.
No, for, for the next 24 hours, you can go around to everyone and tell, and tell them that you are related to a princess. Congratulations, Silas. Just tell all your friends, and I'll have to go around, and you'll have to go around tomorrow and tell them that they're that you know, you're no longer siblings with a princess. It's like, hey, I'm your sister. Now what? I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I don't know. Spend the entire day thinking about what we could do as brother and sister, and then it's gone. Alright, who's left? Arthur and Effie, and then Niles and Odin, which should be wonderful. Let's get the B rank of uh, Arthur and Effie going here. <clears throat> what, was, what was their talk about? It was, um... Protecting Effie more. Arthur needed to be more awesome. He was looking for Effie, trying to get her advice on how to, I guess, um, be more awesome, be a better retainer, fighting to the death of his energy. What's the reason? Suspense. She has a point. She has a point. If you want to be a retainer, you kind of have to be a selfish jerk to everyone that isn't the person you are retaining. Is that is that the word for it? Being retained. Gotta stop being a hero. Yeah, Effie's a jerk. Effie doesn't do crap for anyone. Except Elise. She just eats and fights and sleeps and eats and fights. and eats and fights some more, but she does it for Elise. She doesn't do it for, you know, some rando stranger people. I'm only reasonably generous, citizen. I could always improve my generosity. As could anyone. Besides, I don't give anything away. I'm loaning my things to people. I'm loaning that food. To those starving citizens. They need to pay me back eventually. It's a grand scheme I've had cooked up for a while. Making gold hand over fist from it. It's all a facade. Ha ha! <laughs> Ouch! Minus five awesome points for Evie. That's that's harsh. That is <clears throat> grade A levels of of um, single mindedness. I think. <laughs> like, even if it was you, Arthur, I don't even care. You could burn. You could become. A crispy chicken sandwich. For all I care. If Elise is thirsty, she's getting your water. I'm sorry. It's like, no, 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 I, I understand. I totally get it. It's okay. I would burn too. I would be okay with burning if Elise was thirsty and she had the she needed the only water that I happened to have. But those those old ladies need help too, Arthur. Won't someone think of the old bags, the old hags, the old women who need help crossing the street without breaking a hip? The silly faces can't, that, that can't stop though. Nobody can get enough of Arthur's silly faces. Yeah, <clears throat> not even Effie. Effie will totally let you burn but you still need to make silly faces while you're burning. That's how it works. The world needs your silly faces, Arthur. It would be a lesser place without them.
Yes, justice. Always for justice. Even if you get hit by carriages and have your map stolen by birds. Justice. Always for justice. Tremendously illuminating indeed, citizen. Quite so. There's the silly face. <laughs> Off to resolve this minor identity crisis like a hero. By going to save a kitten in a tree. Nice. <laughs> Even heroes deal with identity crises like everyone else. With ice cream, warm blankets, and Netflix. Or whatever the, uh, whatever the Fire Emblem equivalent of medieval Netflix would be. Watching, uh, I don't know, watching two bums fight over a stale piece of bread? I don't know. All right, last one, right? Odin and Niles. The buddy cop duo of the millennium. We have a job to do. Of course, we always do. It doesn't involve darkness. It always involves darkness. Ooh, weapons. Weapons are nice. Are they going to make me a new weapon? Is it going to be a bow that shoots magic? Or... Uh, a magic tome that shoots bows? I like that idea. A magic spell that shoots bows, that shoot arrows, that shoot magic. And just goes cyclical from there. Oh yes, the names! How could I forget the names? We still need to, uh, we still need to get Odin set up with a, a named weapon. We should do that before we, we, uh, call this video to a close. But I don't have any, I don't have, I'm not sure I have any off the top of my head that I can think of. Anoint those with my mystic tongue. Yeah. That sounds, that sounds kind of, um... Suggestive. <laughs> Niles was thinking what I was thinking. It just just drool over them. <sighs> My mystic saliva will help christen them with darkness. Oh, they're going for everyone. It's just like they're they're not coming to Odin Dark for his his magical mystical prowess in naming inanimate objects. They're just like, hey, everybody, get over here. What do we name this magic spell that shoots bows that shoots magic? Is it, I want him to come up with a name right now. Do it. I will use it. It's like, hey, hey, I got this. Get out of here. You got, I got this. I got this. Forget about it. He said, <laughs> totally got it. Something, something, darkness, grim, dark, violence, umbral, anarchy. I don't know. Let me get my, let me get my. Dark Mage Thesaurus out here. What other words can I use to describe the the black pit of the under the underworld? That sword. Mistletane 2.0. Maelstrom. That's actually not bad. That's not bad. Kinda a <clears throat> little bit generic, I guess. But Grimdark Maelstrom. Just add Grimdark to the beginning of everything and you've got it. P 
powerful staff, white and straight with red. The grim dark candy cane. Scar. <laughs> Poor Odin. I'm I'm not any better. I can't really give him any crap. I can't name things at all. Poor guy. He just needs to call upon his his umbral darkness powers. <clears throat> Surely he has a spell to be able to name weapons, right? And poor Niles just has to sit there. It's like, hold on, no, 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 I got this. I got this. I said I got this. I got this. Or maybe I don't got this. Alrighty, that wraps up. That wraps up our support conversations for this. You might have noticed, I think, earlier, we have another character here named Flint. This is a bond unit, which is, for those of you who don't own Fire Emblem Fates, who don't know how this works, I guess, one of the new features in this game is the ability to interact with other people's castles, which I'm, we won't go through right now, but you can, you can look online, see recommendations for other people's interdimensional space castles. Um, that I guess the the game is actually looking through right now trying to find some recommendations for us which we cannot back out of unfortunately um, but you can establish bonds with the the people of those castles the other players that you can find in the world so you can see like some of my friends and followers from my twitch channel Sci Edge here uh, aggro storm who I think is uh, nightfront from my twitch channel a lot of people who have visited our castle, my castle here, and I visited theirs, and we established a, a bond with Syedge here, who created the bond unit of Flint. Like, I gave him a pink beret, and then suddenly we had a child that just grew out of the ground, and that child's name was Flint, and he's a wyvern rider, which is cool. Uh, and he has a lot of good abilities, actually. If we can take a look at him here. His character power, his personal ability is Bowbreaker, which is really awesome. Especially, especially as a Wyvern Rider, being a flying unit, being able to counter, basically counter Bowmen is very cool. Strength plus two, pretty, pretty normal. And then he has, dra he has a Dragon Fang, which we just received recently in the last, I think in the last chapter, last couple of chapters. And then Dragon Ward, which I think is the upgrade, like the level 15 or 20, whatever it is, skill for the, the Norian or Hoshiden Prince. Half damage when adjacent allies attacked. That's actually kind of cool. So we, we're not going to use him yet, but it's ni he's, he's nice to be able to have in case we, we start having people die off, we can be able to level him up and use him for other purposes. Not right now, though. <clears throat> So, let's see, what are we going to do? We have a smithy. I did add a smithy, where is it? Where did I put it? There it is. And I think... I think we can forge... Is this okay next to these people? Oh, do they have weapons that we can forge? We have a thunder spell that we can forge for... Mr. Dark. Is this gonna cost us anything? It's gonna cost us a topaz, just one topaz. <clears throat> I don't know what Bon is. Might plus two, I don't know what... B-O-N. Let's do it. Uh, Grim Dark Bolt. Why not? Should be in all caps, no. I'm not that kind of guy. Am I going to have enough room for this? I'm probably not going to have enough room for this. It said 12 characters. Grimdark is 8 plus a space plus bolt. That'd be 13 characters. I think I'm going to run out, though. I think it needs to be <clears throat> like 12 is the limit. No, it's not. I got it. Bulp. Not quite. Delete. Okay, looks like there's actually 14. We'll call that good for now. I think hopefully we can rename it. Bam! 
Bam! We have fulfilled Odin's requirement. He will now get crit plus 10, I think, when using this weapon. Wonderful. I'm okay with this. We could go for other people as well, but I, I think I kind of want to. Like we, we could upgrade Felicia's stale bread. Might plus five. That would be on the... That would be better... Hmm. Slightly more damage than the Iron Dagger, but um, I think we're going to hold off on that right now. I'm not sure if and when we're going to get Flora, so we kinda wanna, I kind of want to hold off, see what happens here. Same thing with Arthur, I think, with the Raider Axe. Increases the Might, but not a whole lot otherwise. It's still 65% hit chance. I guess that's pretty standard for Axes, but we'll leave those alone for now. We got Odin's. We got a, a grim dark weapon for Mr. Odin Dark. Activate his personal ability. And I think that'll wrap it up for this episode. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed the support conversations for this episode. Uh, remember to leave a like if you did enjoy the episode. And we'll be back here next time <clears throat> going into the next chapter or paralogue or whatever it is and actually get some combat going. So thank you for watching again, and I'll see you next time.